Welcome to Chess Dog, I'm John, and today we're going to look at one of the most important but somewhat difficult mates in chess. There's the king and queen versus king and the king and rook versus king. Those mates can be challenging, but they're fairly simple. There's the knight and bishop versus king. That is a very hard mate that even grandmasters have missed in tournament play. But this mate, two bishops versus a lone king, it's a doable an achievable mate, but it takes a little nuance and a little chess understanding. And understanding this mate also help us, helps us to understand the power of the bishops. It makes us a better chess player overall. Looking at the position, we see white is the side with the two bishops and black is the side with the lone king. So the basic process, just an overview of the process, is you're going to force the defending king, in this case the black king, to the side of the board and then push it into a corner of the board, and then deliver mate. And you're going to do this by using the bishops to create a wall along with your king that the opposing king cannot cross. You want to eliminate the possible square so you force it exactly where you want it to go. In this position, bishop to g6 check begins the process, king to e5. And you can see that these two bishops are, are already formed a wall. And this king cannot cross that because moving into any of these squares would put it in check. So it can't move that way. So these bishops are already cutting off a large part of the board. King to b7. The king gets closer to assist the bishops in pushing the black king around. King to f6. Hits that bishop, but the bishop just moves. Keeping that wall in place that the king cannot cross. King goes back to e5. King to c6. Now, this king is controlling key squares also, and we see the black king has very limited options right here. There are only three squares it can even move to legally already. So king to d4, bishop to f4. There's a, a crisscross formation, but again, limiting the king's mobility. The king can't go in either direction. It's being forced to the side of the board by the bishops. King to c4, bishop to e5. Now the wall is closing in. It's moving closer, pushing the king to the side of the board. The, the walls are closing in as it is. King to b4, bishop to g8. Again, shrinking the wall. The king cannot cross. The amount of territory the black king has access to is shrinking. King to a3, and this is an alert moment. King to c5 is the, the right move from white, but there's actually a blunder white can play here. That's king to b5. This would actually be a stalemate. As we see, the black king has nowhere to go, but is not currently in check. That would be an actual draw. White would uh, not win the game, but it would be a tie in that case. So king to c5 still gives the black king breathing room, and he wants to push this black king all the way into the corner using the king and two bishops to do so, closing the wall each step of the way. King to a4, bishop to b2, taking away the a3 square, and the king now has only access to a single square. King to a5 is forced, bishop to b3, taking away this square. Again, only one square is available to the king. King to a6. Now, how do we keep the king from escaping the wall? King to c6. Creates, keeps the king pinned to the side of the board. King to a7. An easier mate for white would actually be king to a5. The mate is easier to execute here. Bishop to c3 check, king to a6, bishop c4 check, keeps pushing the king. King to a7, king to c7, and then after king to a8, just bishop d2 and check mate. But we'll look at a longer, more difficult process here when black put, puts up maximum resistance. King to a7, and now bishop to e5, keeping the king from escaping. The king uh, can go to either square, so king to a6. The defending side wants to stay out of the corner because it knows the corner is where the mate's going to be delivered, so it runs away from the corner. Bishop to c7, keeping the king from continuing to move away from the corner, forcing it back. King to a7, bishop to c4 taking away this square, and now the black king only has access to two squares. That wall has continued to shrink to the point where the black king can just go back and forth between a7 and a8. And now white wants to keep the king there, keep it in the box of two squares, while white arranges the bishops to deliver the checkmate. So 
You don't want the king to move from these two squares. Just go back and forth, a7, a8, and that, that's it now that it's in there. King to a8. So the tricky part of this mate is to deliver the mate without stalemating the opponent's king. You want it to be a checkmate, not a stalemate. As we know, a stalemate is when any legal move one side makes puts it in check, puts them in check, but they are not currently in check. So we want to avoid that. Bishop to e5. The bishop begins to maneuver and get into position, leaving the king trapped, continuing to leave it trapped on these two squares. King to a7. King to c7, continuing to leave the king on these squares. King to a8. And now, the big key moment. Bishop to d4 is another stalemate. The king would be stuck here, and it would be a draw. So how do we avoid that? If we play bishop to d5 check, then the king can begin to escape, which we do not want. We want to keep it on those two squares. So how do we avoid delivering a stalemate and pushing the king out of the corner? Well, we do something called temporizing. This is a, a, an idea where you essentially, you lose a tempo on purpose. You want it to be your opponent's move, but it's your move. And in chess, you can't pass or skip your move. You have to make your move when it is your turn. But in this position, there's a way for white to basically pass the move. And what a move that you can make here, bishop to f4. You don't do anything. You just move the bishop one square, and that forces the king on to the deadly a7 square. And now bishop e3 check, forcing king to a8, and bishop to d5 mate. So the, the key move to execute this is in this position, you temporize by losing a tempo, essentially, with bishop f4. You could go to g three also, doesn't matter. And then when the king goes back, bishop e3 check, king to a8, bishop to d5, check mate. Watch this video a few times, practice it over the board or with your friends, and no doubt you will ace it where you can play it instantly, even in a blitz game, without thinking. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.